You can see it's a 3D painting. And I also use, this is not a Gouda bottle, but I call it that because I don't know what it is. There's no name on it in the store, but it shoots out paint, you know, in a, in a point that does this, okay? And, and I like it when it skips around and I might enhance some of the, I'll t I gotta tell you about that little exercise we do in the class. Um, does anybody see that paper? I might need some help up here to go find that in my book that I just put back here. Thank you, Lisa. Um, I make them do this exercise because that's the, I guess, the gist of what I was showing you that one painting. I was trying to, um, you know, mimic that paper that I was buying that was a French word or something. And I thought, you know, actually I liked what I was doing better, so I have them do, which I know you have to do an archival, you know, mark or whatever. We do it with Sharpie markers on tissue paper. So I hand them out the tissue paper and I play uh, some music. And I tell them they can't laugh when I first do it because, you know, it is pretty funny to watch Jennifer do this at first. And, and I reach take the Sharpie marker and we do this. Thank you. Appreciate that. And I just be loose and, you know, dot your eyes and do all that kind of stuff. So then that's what, oh, sorry, that's what this is. Okay. All right. But I will tell you that, I, you know, depending on where the focal point is, and I'm using it if I put it over here, but, you know, we want to enhance that, as you guys know, that are painters, that you enhance that in the focal point to pop it out a little bit more. But that's what this is, and that's where it came from, was that painting I showed you earlier that I was buying purchase papers. I didn't want to buy it anymore. I wanted to create it. So that's, that's what I'm doing with that. Um, I teach this class pretty often. So, needless to say, a lot of the work that you're going to see tonight has this in it. And I'm going to be honest with you, I got a little tired of it. So, I have to put these at an angle for me to be straight for you. And, you know, I was like, how can I get away from this a little bit? So, I'm, I'm gradually trying to do that and then all of a sudden I'm, I, I sneak back into it. I just can't help it because I love movement in my paintings. And this is one way for me to do that. And, you know, you're creating some repetition with circles and circles and here's circles. Uh, this particular one was the white paper that you saw that I showed you that was transparent uh, in, in the holes or whatever. And I stained this a little bit with um, Payne's Gray. And so it gave it that blue, uh, steel blue look with the grays and I just like that earthy type of look. I like graphics a lot, so you know, chances are you're going to see this in my paintings or stripes, but the the movement is is just something I like to put in my paintings. It tells you what you need to know about me. Um, this is one that I believe has some skins in it somewhere, right in this area. Um, I wanted to get away from the graphics or the uh, circular, you know, whatever, I don't, what do you call that? What do I, script. the script that I do, you know, it's my own script. So gesture, I mean, gesture. gesture stuff, yeah, thank you. So I, was, I just kind of randomly glued it down and it's, so it's peeking out underneath this area. If you, can you see that? Yeah. Peeking through, okay. And you know, it's here and I enhanced it in the, the focal point and I wanted to, you know, repeat the turquoise and come down, um, but I, I want to be conscious of being, you know, dominant in warm or cool, and so, you know, I do a lot of warm paintings. Cool paintings are kind of hard for me to do, I think. I don't know. I just think warm all the time. So, um, you know, once I did everything um, with the collage and created my design, you know, this is where I wanted to tell you that I have enhanced this a little bit in just the areas that were transparent. These are the papers that I was talking to you about that are, you can see through that area right here. But I layered it over some of this tissue paper so that what you saw through there, what you see through there is the orange. I could change that to be this color, depending on what I put underneath there. So I like that option of bringing that white through and creating that pathway of light. And I've got my pathway of darks bouncing through here. But, this was a little bit lame in this area, and I wanted it to bounce down, this orange, and so I took quinacridone nickel azo gold, 
and I just watered it down like watercolor and I just enhanced it with those teeny tiny brushes, you know? Yep. And the same with this, you know, it just depends on what I need. I do what serves me. Um, so there's a lot of mixed media in my paintings. I use um, um, white gesso sometimes or I use the titanium white just depending on, you know, if I want it to be white, white. The white in that right there mm -hmm. is the white of the pen stencil paper. Yes, it and is. And it's on top of the red. Yes, it is. That's gotcha. correct. Yeah. yeah. And these are these are, you know, papers that I made. All of these are all of these are handmade papers. Nothing is purchased in these that I'm showing you now. I've created them all. That I'm better? Okay. I'm entering this in the San Diego show. I shouldn't tell you that, <laughs> but I am. Catherine Chang Lu is the juror, and I'm just a big admirer of hers. Um, and uh, I hope she sees something in it that she likes. It's a little bit different from what I, you know, what you saw. You know, there's a lot of really distinct things. This is a little more mystery to it, I think, and I think it speaks of what I uh, love and the colors that I love. This painting is very indicative of what I used to do, but still is in my soul. Um, so grays and golds and popping with the warm color and stuff. So all of these are, again, handmade papers and enhanced with uh, some uh, acrylic. This is created with acrylic as this is, um, but it's layers. And I just work it until I feel it's right. Sometimes I need to add, you know, a, um, if you know what a, a veil is, with a watered down, you know, gesso or something, and I do a fair amount of that. Um, is that so, like a glaze? Um, yeah, it is kind of, isn't it? It's sort of a cloudy, yeah, you know, cloudy and I, I put it on, and I, I do it a lot of times with my hand. I get into the paint, and I swoosh it on like that, and I use my little fine mister and mist it, and I move it around until I like it. And a lot of times I'll take alcohol, and, and drop it in. I do it this way where I'm taking it out of the bottle like this and using that and flicking it on like, you know. Then it will create those little textures of holes and, and that sort of thing. So, you know, I felt like this made a nice connection with one of the papers that I had made, but I will tell you I went in and enhanced it a tad bit more with the orangey color paint. I uh, wanted to bring it down and you know, feel like it was successful. So, if anybody else had any questions, I appreciate questions. You know. Jennifer, what is your substrate you're using? This is a canvas. Oh, that is a yeah, canvas. Yeah, all that I'm showing you now are going to be canvases, except to like get to the. And it looks like you're mounting them. On I'm mounting these in uh, nifty frames from Olive, uh, Olive Branch Gallery in um, Wisconsin, and. They're wonderful. I get them from Dan and Janice Morris. They make them ahead for me, whatever size I need, and then I can mount them myself. There we go. Do you prepare the canvas with something? I put gesso on it first. Yeah, yeah. You know, Bob Burridge always says you want to put your own DNA on there first. They, you can buy pre-gessoed canvases, but you know, we just do it. It's a habit. But I do paint the sides of my canvases black first. Because, I don't know, there's something about that white that just bothers me. I can see it out of the corner of my oh, eye, yeah. and that just takes yeah, that, yeah, it just takes the, you know, yeah. mind chatter away from me. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't change that if I, you know, because the one painting that you saw here already was literally done on watercolor paper. So I should explain that, because thanks for that question, Lana, because this is watercolor paper mounted on canvas. And I painted the canvas a color that I felt was, you know, a little friendly to the painting, okay? And so the sides of this one are painted that steel gray too, okay? And it's 300 pound paper, and I glued it on with gel medium, and then weighted it, and so. I think that I haven't completed yet. I think it's close. There's just a couple of details I want to do. I did this just before I came trying to prepare things for this that are in progress. And I get too excited and I get them too far and I go, well, you might as well finish that one, then you start another one. It's like, okay, am I gonna be ready for this class? I've been getting ready for this class for three weeks. <laughs> so, anyway, um, 
again, I sort of went back to the, the script in there, but I sort of used another piece of paper to take you away from that. And alcohol here with these little holes, if you can kind of, I don't know if you can even see those. Um, repetition is big in our work, so I repeated some circles this way, and it's up here. I repeated the script up here by, um, I, I had orange underneath this tan color and let it dry. Then I put this tan cover color of, of acrylic over the top of it. And while it was wet, I took the back of one of my brushes and just, you know, took the line work out and repeated it out. Um, I don't know, I just really like line work. This is uh, the Kimberly, tell me, help me here, those pencils, you know, we get Carlin's. They're watercolor pencils, but it's a Kimberly brand and they're just really nice. And then you have to use a fixative to set it before you can continue uh, with any type of painting or anything or it'll run. Um, when I finish my paintings, I usually take a matte medium and I cover them all because if there's any shiny areas or whatever, then it makes everything the same. What are you laughing about? For my demo, which I'm going to do just a design study. I'm not going to go into the canvas painting due to time. Get this out of the way. I don't think I'm going to need it. Maybe I will. I keep thinking I've got a cord and I can only go so far. So, get this for a back. Okay, good. All right, this, this, uh, you saw this one already, but this is, um, you know, a design study that this is what they've been working on today in the workshop. Um, I've had them do, I, I tried to start them out with maybe just a basic cruciform design because I thought that was about as easy as we could go. I have seasoned painters in my workshop. I'm really fortunate. Um, so they all know about composition and all that, so I don't have to bore the tears out of them with going through all of that, which we all, you know, I mean, you can read that in a book. So, this was something I did fairly recently. So, anyway, my idea was to layer these, the, the stained tissues that I showed you in the beginning. And um, I kept building up the value and, you know, to try to get my lights, my mediums, and my darks, and then I keep my pathways of lights and darks through the painting to lead you in and lead you out. So that's the concept that I use in all of these. So I'll just kind of go through the examples that I had for the class, um, you know, you could tell again, I like my line, my you know, stripes and, and graphics and so forth. This is an example of a complicated paper where I, I have more layers of acrylics. Um, you know, because we're in a time frame and you're not taking the workshop, I can't explain to you exactly how that's done, but it's just layers and layers that are built up to make a complicated paper. Some of the papers are just more simple papers, you know, like these, that I might be able to tone or leave as is. So they're just basically using black paint or white paint or a gray or something. It's another example, a design study. Um, again, there's here, you can see the graphics that I, you know, had them do with the lesson that was kind of fun. Anybody that's in class, was that fun? Yes. yes. <laughs> of how I start my design studies um, when I'm doing a class. I just want all, I think, tell them, think about your corners all being different. Leave, you can leave some. Do you ever use anything other than squares, like a cutout of a bird or butterfly or anything? No, I've not done that. You mean the, of the substrate? Uh, instead of the squares. Oh, the, the pieces I cut? Yeah. I use some teared papers. Uh, I tear some, yes. 
my demo is going to be. I'll show you that when I do the demo. But a lot of times when I'm just trying to establish the cruciform part, this is how I start because then I will break those edges up. When you'll see that coming up. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So then this is built up layers of the same color of tissue paper. It's just built up to, to get value number two, the medium value. Okay. Then I asked them in the classes, now I don't always do this when I paint, but in the classes I found that it was easier for the students to establish the center of interest. And so then I asked them to grab a piece of high contrast, you know. So, you know, you know that from the value scale. And so this is a piece of just black over a stencil. And so there's this, tr where you see white here, that's the white in the paper showing through. So this whole piece is transparent where the letters are. But because I laid them down on the tissue paper, you see the, the color through it, okay? That's what I find really fun, you know, because I leave them plain in my sleeve of my portfolio over there so that I can use them this way or I can change them up by staining the back of the paper. I think I may have brought so I can show you how to stain the back of the paper. Full <coughs> of, of putting the focal point in, just a basic cruciform design again, all four corners being different. Somebody had a piece of Hansi paper, I believe is what it was called, and I was trying to see if it was transparent, and it is. So she gave me a couple sheets of that, so that was sort of fun to try. This is taking it to the next step where I may be adding darks. Um, I would work through this one a little bit further. Not much, but I'm, I will go in sometimes and enhance those areas that were like this with white to make that more important so that that's your focal point. Okay. Just backing up a little bit with that tissue paper. For wrapping gifts or stuffing your bags with now. And we lay it on a garbage sack and we um, drop a little bit of acrylic paint and then I brush it on with a foam brush. You can add different colors, lots of water. Yeah. How long does it take to dry then? Depends on the day and the room temperature and that sort of thing. Anywhere from probably two to six hours. Yeah. The question, how do you get your white dots on the That's another paper that I have them make in the um, class and I'm uh, I think I can say this safely that I invented that paper. I'm going to get a piece of it. I think, no, in my book, is it here? Yeah. Um, I, I loved cherry paper for uh, integrating an area of a painting into the next area. But it doesn't go transparent. So I decided to try it on this deli paper and I would, I, you know, how you take paint and flick it like that, or you can tap it this way, and you you get this sort of thing going out. I do them in, I don't think you're going to see this unless I put it on the top of the portfolio. Oh, whoops, I pulled the wrong one out. All right, this one, I'll show you this one. It's got spatters on it, okay? All you see are the spatters when it goes down. Now this one has three colors on it. Sometimes I do some with just white, because white lends itself to, you know, areas like this where I want to take you out with whites, or it just breaks it up a little bit and adds a little more.